Well, Happy New Year everybody. What do we have here? We have something that is probably a bit of a relic for uh, 2017. We have an Iowa double cassette deck here. And uh, this particular one is a WX220 model, which is a particularly cool model as far as features go. Um, it uh, has obviously the ability to dub because it's got two uh, two decks and um, it's also got another cool feature which is high speed dubbing and um, another cool feature that along with that is that it's got four track heads so along with high speed dubbing it can actually dub both sides of the tape simultaneously um, so on the high speed setting you could dub a 60 minute tape in 15 minutes it's pretty cool so 4x speed uh, versus normal playback dubbing um, so restoring old tape decks can be a real pain in the butt and this that's what this video is about how do we restore an old tape deck and before we get into how we restore an old tape deck I want to I want to talk about should we restore an old tape deck I mean let's not get into the argument of whether tapes have any use or not in 2017 I think that they do I enjoy them very much um, but in order to get good enjoyment out of cassettes you have to have good equipment and uh, since there's a lot of old equipment on the market today that can be picked up for next to nothing um, and there's double cassette decks that might on the surface look like this one at every thrift store that you come by you know which one makes sense to buy if you want to get an old cassette deck how do you choose a cassette deck and uh, how do you decide if it's worth repairing or not? Because you're, you're virtually guaranteed to have to do some sort of repairs to any type of cassette deck that you buy that is now 30 years old. Um, and in pretty much every case, the failure boils down to rubber components, um, pinch rollers, belts, um, uh, idler pulleys, things like that. Um, so you're almost certainly gonna have to order new belts for your deck and know how to put them on um, and in the case of these Iowa decks they <laughs> they had a they're, they're notorious for this they're, they're a pain in the butt to change the belts they've got an idler pulley set up that's prone to be problematic and you have to keep the idler pulleys very well clean and and the rubber has to be very grippy um, or it can slip and um, the belts, though, themselves turn to tar. They actually melt, and I'll, I'll show you that in a minute after we move the camera and we start getting into the mechanics of the thing. Um, the belts turn to tar. They literally have to be scraped off and then cleaned with a solvent to, to remove it. That's how bad it is. Um, they just completely turn back into whatever petroleum product they were made out of. Um, it's kind of amazing how thoroughly and completely they break down just all by themselves. So, um, getting back to how do we select a deck? Well, um, a double deck is actually probably one of the least likely decks to be a high quality deck. Um, there are several things that look like nice features on decks, but actually deteriorate, the, not only deteriorate the quality of the playback and recording, but also make repairs more problematic and just make the deck less worth your time. Um, the first thing is auto reverse. Uh, this deck here is a non auto reverse deck, and that's good. That's one of the reasons I decided to pick this deck up. Um, non auto reverse decks are better um, for a couple of reasons, and I'll get into that in just a second. Um, there are two things that make a, uh, a, a deck sound good or, or bad, and, and those things are the head and the transport. Um, the transport is the bits that move the tape um, forward and backward and so on and so forth. And th the head is just exactly that. It's the part that picks up the sound um, off the tape. And both of those have to be really good in order to get good results out of the tape deck. The first problem that auto reverse decks have is that um, the vast majority of them, not all of them, but the vast majority of them actually physically move the head. They, they have a, a rather complex and finicky mechanism that actually makes the head turn 180 degrees um, when 
when you switch sides and that's bad for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's an extra mechanism that's a pain in the butt to fix if it ever has any problems. And number two, the precision of the alignment of the head is something that, that is important for good fidelity and a, a head that has to turn 180 degrees and turns 180 degrees all the time is never as precisely aligned frankly as a head that's just screwed in place and and azimuthed out and adjusted at the factory and just kind of glued there and you know so that's the first thing I look for in a deck is that it's not an auto reverse deck unless it's a one of a very few uh, rare breed of auto reverse deck that actually has a fixed head and uses a four track head this has four track heads and oddly they could have made this an auto reverse deck by simply adding another pinch roller and capstan but they didn't do that for whatever reason um, they could have done that and they wouldn't have had to turn the head 180 degrees because again it's a four track head it'll work in both directions and I don't know why they didn't make this an auto reverse deck they could have made it a very very high quality auto reverse deck because it had the prerequisite four head uh, the four track head that that doesn't require turning 180 degrees which almost all of them do so you know look down inside if the first thing you see is if the head is screwed directly to the body then it's probably not an auto reverse deck and obviously you can read the labeling and see um, but if it's sitting in a little socket with a little turny thing that you know that makes the head you can see a little turntable underneath the thing that makes it turn around if you see that then okay it's an auto reverse deck and you probably I mean if it's in good working shape already great but again you're almost certainly going to have to replace the belts and I don't bother with auto reverse decks okay so that's that's the first thing that you look for in a deck is is it auto reverse or not all right I avoid the auto reverse decks the second thing I look for is the the condition of the heads I'll, I'll shine a flashlight down into there and look and see the condition of the heads, the condition of the pinch roller and the capstan, and what you're looking for is wear. Um, the surface of the heads should be very smooth. There should be very little. Um, I mean, there should be very little appearance of wear. There might be some dirt, but what you don't want to see is any uneven surface, any pitting, any kind of um, just any kind of wear, any pits, any missing pieces in the head. Um, something that would indicate, you know, abrasive wear. If you see abrasive wear in the head, that you know, short of putting a new head on there, that's not repairable. So avoid a deck that has wear in the head. Uh, the condition of the pinch roller is also very important. The rubber part down there, um, which uh, clasps the belt, uh, the tape to the uh, the capstan, um, it can be dirty. But again, if the rubber is hard and glazed and or out of round or is in any way something that can't be reconditioned with rubber reconditioner and we'll get into rubber reconditioner too later on in this video I'll show you some stuff called Ron Regrip that works a treat at uh, dealing with rubber components that aren't too far gone and just have a glazing um, or a hard outer surface but have good supple soft rubber underneath you can use this stuff and you can also kind of abrade the outer st surface away and it will definitely bring back a lot of rubber components to serviceable life um, so we'll talk about that too but again if it's an auto reverse head or if it's got wear on the head you know I would just keep looking I would keep looking right there I wouldn't even go any further with that the next thing you want to know is the capabilities of the uh, recording because uh, obviously if you're going to getting a tape deck at this point you, you might be getting it to listen to old tapes and stuff too but you maybe you want to experiment with making mixtapes doing recordings um, stuff like that um, it's a great medium to do that with and what you want to make sure is that your deck can actually make high quality recordings the first thing to look for is to make is to make sure that the deck supports high bias uh, and is adjustable bias right so um, either with a bias setting so in this case um, where's the bias setting on this uh, we have a fine Okay, so actually this deck has sensors, and I'll show you them later, little mechanical sensors that read the notches on the cassette shell and set the bias automatically, but over here on the, on the right-hand side, it has a fine tuning for the bias. So you can override, like there's a detent in the middle, so that just goes off the factory settings. 
um, but you can increase or decrease from what it automatically sets to based on the, sh the shell reading. And that's a very good feature to have. And down here it actually has a little cheat sheet for what tapes sound best with what bias settings. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, chrome tapes are still obtainable. They're not as easy to find as they once were. You can't just go to a store and buy Maxell XL2s anymore. They're not in production. Um, but chrome tapes are still obtainable, old stock. Um, get them online, find them at thrift stores, things like that. Um, if you want to make high quality recordings, you're pretty much kind of, you're pretty much going to need to start looking at chrome tapes. I mean, f there's nothing wrong with high quality ferric tapes, but you're not going to get the the low noise and the high signal ratio that you'll get out of a chrome tape. Um, metal tapes are great if the deck supports metal. That's awesome. Metal tapes are very very hard to find these days, sadly. Um, they do make the best recordings, but.